and welcome. Thank you for joining our live webcast today, where we are going to discuss and demonstrate the ways in which Duos Tech is utilizing technology to transform the manual mechanical inspection process for railway operators, focusing on operational safety and efficiency. My name is Ashley Minuti, and I am a member of the business development team. Joining our panel of subject matter experts today are Jeffrey Machai, our Chief Technology Officer, Derek Schmink, our Vice President of Research and Development and Innovation, and two of our Mechanical Rail Car Inspectors, Mark Smith and David Mosley. Thank you again for joining us. Jeff, let's go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Ashley, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. In this demo cast, we're going to show you our rail car inspection portal. The rail car inspection portal is used by class one freight railroads, as well as passenger railroads to facilitate the remote inspection of passing rail cars in real time. In North America alone, there are more than 1.6 million rail cars running on almost 200,000 miles of track. Keeping those rail cars in good working order and in continuous service is critical to ensuring the operational efficiency of a railroad. More importantly, routine detailed inspections are required in order to meet federal safety standards and regulations. In conceiving the rail car inspection portal, the challenge was straightforward. How can we leverage existing and emerging technologies to increase the efficiency and accuracy of the rail car inspection process? We knew that providing good images of the rail car to remote inspectors would be a good start. We began with a thorough analysis of everything that must be seen in order to complete an inspection. All of the parts and components, small and large, in all of the various areas of a typical rail car. It became evident that we would need a 360 degree all around view of the train car, the top, the sides, and even the underside in order to enable a good inspection. Adding to the challenge, we knew that to make inspections more efficient and timely, we must be able to capture these images in real time while the train is moving at track speed. That's anywhere from 35 to 120 miles an hour. We're really talking about performing high speed, high resolution image acquisition in some of the most challenging conditions imaginable. It took a lot of research, development, testing, tweaking and rework and even required inventing some components that simply did not exist. From specialized purpose-built lighting and high-precision optics to high-speed, high-resolution cameras and environmental controls, the solution took shape and began to deliver real value to our early adopters. While the hardware devices, equipment, and apparatus within the system are critical to the solution, there is an equal complement of software which is responsible for orchestrating and managing the operation of the devices and making the acquired images and data available to the inspector. Most common and most visible of these is Centrico. Centrico is an intuitive, easy to use browser-based application that allows users to review and inspect rail cars using the high resolution images that are acquired by the portal. The application provides a set of tools that enables an inspector to locate areas of interest, zoom in on specific parts of an image, and make notations regarding findings. The addition of artificial intelligence or machine learning to the railcar inspection portal increases the value of the solution even further for our clients. Our artificial intelligence machine learning platform called TrueView 360 enables the rail car inspection portal to perform many of the inspections automatically. It makes the inspector's job even easier by identifying anomalies ahead of time, which allows them to focus on the areas where the system detected an issue. Finally, we know that the rail car inspection portal cannot and should not operate in a vacuum. That is to say that the product has been designed so that it can easily be integrated with third party and customer owned systems. Such integration allows the railcar inspection portal to feed any other system with actionable information, which, for example, may be used to generate repair orders. Now, after a few years and a few generations of the product, 
Duos Tech's railcar inspection portal stands alone as the most effective, comprehensive, and flexible advanced railcar inspection solution for Class 1 and passenger railroads. And we're not finished yet. The Duos Tech engineering and hardware teams are committed to continuous innovation and are hard at work, developing many enhancements and even more capabilities. From the further utilization and integration of artificial intelligence algorithms to improvements in lighting and specialized optics, the engineers and product designers are leveraging proven and emerging technologies to make something great even better. And now to show you what that looks like in the field, I'd like to turn it over to Derek Schmenk, who will walk you through one of our live production sites. Hi, I'm Derek Schmink, Vice President of Research Development and Innovation here at Duos Technologies. We're at a live production site for our rail car inspection portal system. The Duos Technologies rail car inspection portal system captures 360 degrees of a train at track speed using high intensity lighting, a number of sensors, and camera technology. I'm going to get into the different camera perspectives and sensor technology that we use here at Duos to capture those images. Due to the extensive amount of data that a rail car inspection portal creates, we require an extensive amount of server equipment. This site in particular generates 25 gigabytes per second. Our future inspection portals, we're looking upwards of 80 gigabytes per second. That is an extensive amount of data requirement to, here on the edge. One of our most important perspectives is the vehicle undercarriage examiner, the view system. This has three cameras in it. They're line scan cameras. They're taking an undercarriage picture of the vehicle where some of the most critical features of a train can be detected where there's a flaw to prevent other safety hazards. Another of our perspectives is our obliques. This particular one here is for the oblique trucks. That's a perspective to get an angled look around corners as the train passes. That's to catch other items that we can't see with a direct on approach like we do with the line scan cameras. This is our oblique coupler. It's a little higher. It's aiming in, catching different angles and around the corners for the couplers. In a rail car inspection portal, there's numerous sensors. One of the sensors is an AEI, also known as an automatic equipment identification. That receives an RF signal to identify the cars that are passing. Another important perspective is our side truck pano. It's capturing the images on the side of the train for the trucks where the wheels, the springs, the brake pads, and other mechanical features can be detected. This, and along with all our line scan perspectives, it uses the linear speed sensor technology, which is used to stitch and compile the pictures pixel by pixel to give you accurate, perfect picture quality. Rail car inspection portal requires a significant amount of sensors and camera technology. In addition to that, an intense amount of light is required to take high quality photos at train speed. So we have numerous perspectives here at the RIP. One of them is the top panorama. We have two perspectives for that position. One is a zoom perspective and one is a wide perspective. The zoom perspective is primarily capturing the coupler from the top angle. That's the primary reason for that. We have a visual inspection algorithm currently in production called the knuckle pin missing algorithm. Uh, it's capturing knuckle pins that are missing from the couplers, which are very important to ensure that decoupling doesn't happen with the trains. We have some additional dynamic perspectives that we've introduced here in the recent future, and those are our extremely high resolution 8K resolution line scans that are capturing trucks and top. Those will allow an even more intense visual inspection process to occur with those perspectives. Another perspective that we've recently added is our oblique view. That's capturing the undercarriage of the car from different angles so we can see around corners, above rails, and around things that may obscure the vision of the view. This concludes our live rail car inspection portal site visit. I'm now going to turn to David and Mark to go over our Centrico platform. Hello, I'm Mark Smith, Senior Mechanical Carman here at Duos Technologies, where along with my team, we bring over 27 years experience with Class 1 railroads as carmen, trainers, and management. Today I'm going to show you briefly the ease of inspecting your rail cars 
using the Centrico system. The Centrico system, we have the ability to look at 360 degrees all the way around your car, especially the bottom sides where it is hard to see. But with our system, we are able to see the things that often get missed. What we do here, along with not only supplying the images, we also build the AI. So today I'm going to show you the ease of how easy it is to inspect your freight cars. First, I just want to kind of go over the Centrico user page. What you see here in front of on the screen now is the basic user setup. This can be modified to however you'd like. Well, I have it set up here today. I have a top view. I have one of our truck side views. I have the view B, which is our bottom camera system, which is in between the rail. And we also have a far side image here. Look to the left. This is where you have the ability to search either by particular car. You can search by a train ID, and you can also search by operator detections. So what we'll start off with first is one of the three ways that you can visually inspect your trains without being out in the elements. You have the ability to look at your train before it gets into your rail yard. That way, when the train comes in, have your forces, have your materials, ready to go, get it fixed, get it down, and get it back out on the rail again to you know increase your speed, your velocity, and your dwell time within your yards. So the first way I'm gonna show you today is live scrolling. It live scrolls, so you can sit here, and as I'm doing this, I'm looking, the top views down, I'm looking for bent cut levers, the sides, I'm looking at brake shoes, I'm looking for bent safety appliances. And on the bottom, I can look at my draft gears, my brake beams, anything that a normal carman is trained to visually inspect in a rail yard, you're doing it here with the Centrico system. Because the years I spent walking the rail yards, I know what I'm looking for, I know the trouble areas, and this is what our system brings to you. It allows you to visually inspect those areas at a much faster and safer way of inspection. Now the next one I'm going to, to demonstrate is the manual, but basically it's just moving the screen left to right or right to left, however you choose, you can stop, you can back up, and say, say you see something you want to take a closer look at, you just magnify that screen or that camera image and it zooms you right in. So maybe I thought I seen a missing cotter key, it's obviously there, so I can just keep going. And also you can manually inspect in single camera mode and just move right on to the next car. Okay, now the next mode I'm gonna share with you today is inspection mode. Inspection mode allows you to zoom in on an area or a target and it gives you your highest quality image that we provide here at, at Duos. So in this, as I'm, if I'm looking and I wanna say, I see this car is highlighted in red. Now what this tells me is this is one of our algorithms that we've developed here along with my team that the system detected. You can hover over it um, over here on the right and it says it's hopper sliding gate open. With that I can come down here to my view B and I find my sliding gate and it's open right there. I go to inspection mode and I change my view to my bottom. I come right over here and I move my icon right here over the target area. I right click it or click it and it's locked. After I find my defect, I can right click and I'm bringing up the detection toolbox. In the detection toolbox, it tells you the camera source, the train time, the time of the inspection, car tag number, and it will also give you the option to classify it, select your YMA codes, and any comments you want to add. So we know the gate is open on this one. So we can come right over here, we click on BL Expedite because it can be fixed in the yard. It does not need to come out of the train. You click to your rule, and we come down to door and door parts. After that, you can type in any additional information you'd like to have. Now I'm going to type in hopper gate open. 
Once I do that, I can select save and this will automatically go to your user system, whatever that would be within your, your company. So if you wanted to warn the next yard it's going to or your expedite repairman, they'll know everything that you see right here. It will go to them and they'll be ready when your train comes in. As I'm going through and I'm manually inspecting trains, just like I mentioned early in manual inspection, in inspection mode, if a car has a defect from the AI, it will also show up red in inspection mode. This one is highlighted red, so I'm looking at it, and right there is our problem. Same thing, lock it in, come back, open up your inspection screen. There it is, right there's open plug door. Both handles are turned are not in the lock position, same thing. Right click, add your parts to it, add your notes, add your YMA codes, save it. Your guys are alerted when it comes in. As we move along here, I'm going to show you just a few other of our AI that we developed here at Duos Tech. Once back in manual inspection mode, like I said earlier, when you come to the red ones, you can highlight it by saying hazmat placards. DO008. That is one of Duos's detections. You can click on that car number. There again, it shows up red. Once you click the red up here, this little hidden box comes up and it says hazmat placards. What the AI does is we identify placards on hazmat cards and identify them that they're the same on both sides. As you can see, this one has been validated by the user that both placards matched. In closing, I'd like to thank you for your time for allowing me to show you a little bit about our Central Coast system here. If you have any further questions, please reach out to myself or anyone on my team here at Duos Technologies. I'm now going to hand it over to Jeff Nachai, our Chief Technology Officer. Thank you. Well, hopefully those, uh, those videos uh, gave you insight into how Duos Tech is utilizing technology to uh, transform uh, rail car inspection. Uh, with the remaining time we have left, uh, you know, we're uh, happy to answer any, any questions you may have about the system and the process. And uh, for that, I'm going to turn it over to Ashley to kind of coordinate some of the uh, uh, questions and answers. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, so we've got a few questions here, and I will start with, uh, will this enable assessment of the proper securing of loads on flat cars to assess compliance with the OTLR figures applicable to the load, or only detect evidence of load displacement or grossly loose strapping? So I believe for that question, do we want to go with Mark or David, one of our mechanical car inspectors? Uh, yes. Um to answer that one, uh, as far as loads, yes, we can see the loose strapping. Um, we can um, also see if anything's dangling off the side of the black cars or any car with securement. Um, <clears throat> as far as open top, or not the open top rules, but the uh, um, the rules for loading, it just depends on the type of car and the strapping. I'll go ahead and add to that. Um, it's important to understand too that the rail car inspection portal delivers uh, you know, two, two kinds of uh, two dimensions of, 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 uh, of value that we're talking about here. The first is is uh, supplying high resolution images so that the inspectors can more easily do their jobs. They can see things from uh, a, a visual image that uh, would be harder to see up close, especially when you talk about things like, for example, under the train. Um, the second part is when we talk about assessment or detection and things like that. That's a more uh, a, a more automated way to do things. And what that does is that just makes the inspector's job easier because um, we, the system basically tells the inspector that they should look at this image a little closer because the system has identified that there might be something wrong with it. So um, for that, obviously for 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 this type of condition. Um, you know, certainly you get the image of it, but if we were going to talk about an uh, artificial intelligence algorithm, it's something we'd have to be looked at separately. Is that a fair answer? Uh, hopefully that answers that uh, question. Great, thank you. So um, another question uh, that came through 
uh, or more of a comment was that a class one shared reported defects of a passenger rail uh, cars running on the class one tracks. Resolution was awesome. However, since the cars are passenger cars and not freight cars, the reported defects were false calls. Um, I'm also going to turn that back over to Jeff as well, because we do in fact inspect uh, major passenger rail cars as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, there are, uh, to answer the question kind of directly and, and kind of summarize, and then I'm going to hand it over to Mark actually, maybe for some things. But let me, let me just say um, algorithms are developed specifically for certain types of, uh, sometimes for certain types of cars and certain types of defects. And uh, this is one of those cases where obviously passenger cars, things that are looked for, they're a little different. And uh, Mark can, can maybe provide some more detail on it. Yeah, to answer that question uh, a little further, just a uh, quick background, David and myself, we were mainly class one uh, uh, rail freight inspectors. Um, we've had limited knowledge of passenger cars. Uh, we are working with uh, a passenger carrier here in the States to teach ourselves uh, more about passenger freight. What we're looking at when we're inspecting these is things that catch our eye. Um, what may be a defect for class one may not be for passenger rail. Uh, so there's just things that we we have, you know, we see that may be cause for uh, further inspection. Uh, like I said, our background is class one freight. Um, so if that answers your question, uh, a little bit more about the, the false calls. Uh, we've seen uh, several different uh, things looking at various passenger cars. Um, just, uh, so if you have any further questions, please uh, reach out to me. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Mark. Um, another question um, is, what are the impacts of blizzards or snowstorms? And how do we address that? Um, so I can, I can start that one and then maybe I'm gonna pass it over to Derek for a little more detail. Uh, but by way of example, obviously we have uh, a lot of equipment that uh, goes under the train, and not only the blizzards and snowstorms, but under the train is not a very you know isolated, uh, clean place to be in most cases. Um, so our our equipment has been designed to uh, limit the effects of, of uh, not only snow and things like that, but everything else that, that could be under there. Um, we do that, for example, with snow and ice. Uh, the oblique view, for example, uh, and uh, Derek can talk more about this. We have it, it, the glass has been designed with built in heaters, and we also have a blower, uh, heater blower uh, that is used to uh, keep snow and ice off of those, uh, off of those uh, surfaces, which allow us obviously for uh, uh, clear imaging when you're doing that. Derek, can you elaborate on some of those? Yeah, the uh, view system is inherently uses a, a what we call a, our air knife system to keep the, the uh, glass clear. The view, uh, the line scan cameras are, are essentially pretty much not affected by the uh, the blizzards and the snowstorms. But the area scan cameras, like the obliques and stuff like that, there is an effect of snow. Um, there is no real easy way around it, but we do mitigate any buildup from creating long-term um, visibility issues related to that. Um, but for the most part, we are continuously working through those, those challenges um, and we're, we're, we're progressing nicely on, in that regard. Yeah, and, and all of the other related equipment as well, not only the cameras, but every piece of equipment we have, uh, we test it thoroughly to make sure that it will last in, in uh, environments with extreme temperatures. Uh, we have an environmental test chamber here that we uh, test some things with all the time. So we're, we're constantly looking, making sure that this is uh, uh, going to be reliable in those uh, harsh environments. Thank you, guys. Uh, another question. Uh, so other than the hopper gates, what true benefit does this give the super sites already in place on class one railroads. 
And I believe I would like to turn it over to either David or Mark. David, do you want to take this one? I got that. Uh, well, as of right now, we can currently see broken bolsters, uh, <laughs> broken draft gears or cracked draft gears. We can see cracked uh, bowls, cracked center plates, loose securement up underneath the car, loose pins. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Pretty much anything that you can see inside of a shop with a car jacked up, up underneath it, we can see through our camera systems. Fantastic. So uh, we've got time for a couple more questions. Um, what is the processing power of Duos Tech's Edge data centers? Derek, I'm gonna turn that one over to you. It's a lot. Uh, <laughs> we um, actually run about, um, on an average rail inspection portal site, uh, we are running about 25 gigabytes per second. Um, to get some perspective to that, that's like being able to download one 4K movie per second. Um, it's an extensive amount of data to process. Uh, we actually have other platforms that we're that we pretty much developed at this point that we will be hitting around 80 gigabytes per second, which is more like four 4K movies per second. Um, it's an extensive amount of processing power in those uh, systems. Great, and we've got time for one more question. Um, let's see, where a defect, I'm sorry, where a defect is identified, does the speed of notification of the operating crew depend on the internal system response of your client to whom an alert or anomaly report is made by you? Or is there any form of automatic trackside alert directly provided to the crew of the passing train, such as a hot box detector? The, uh, the, the notification made to the crew is obviously made by client systems. It's not made directly by, by, by our systems. We interface with the client systems uh, that are responsible for that. Um, however, you know, the possibility exists. There's, there's a, a lot of flexibility in terms of notification and how we get data out of the system. And that obviously could be in real time. Uh, it is in real time, most of the time. Um, but right now, the, the client systems are responsible for it. You guys want to. We, we do have the ability to trigger right. email notifications, mm -hmm. SMS right. notifications as well, um, when a detection is flagged. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time for questions. We have quite a few more that we did not get to. We will answer those um, through email. But also, please, for any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, send us an email. If you send it directly to me at sales at duostech.com or ashley.inuz at duostech.com. Uh, I would love to continue answering questions and setting up any demos, live demos for you as well. Thank you very much for joining us today.